people question why Christians should have to pray and ask God for things when he already knows our needs before we need them. He knows what's coming up. He knows what we need. And he's already promised to provide all of our needs for us. So why should we have to go to the throne of God and ask him for those things? Well, the reason is really very simple. Yes, he does know all of your needs, even before you know them. And yes, he has promised to provide for all your needs. But, you know, God wants to be more to us than a heavenly ATM machine. He wants to be our heavenly father. What he wants with us is a relationship. And when we pray and we tell him about what's going on in our lives and we invite him to, to help us in our lives, we're, we're fellowshipping with him. We're deepening our intimacy with him. We're doing life with him. We're including him in our lives, and that's what he wants. He wants to be included in our lives with us. Think about it. Do you want people taking you for granted? Do you think God would want to be taken for granted? No, he wants to be invited, included into our lives. And John says, whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. And the phrases we ask and we receive are in an ongoing sense. Asking and receiving describe a Christian's habitual experience. Now, if it doesn't describe your habitual experience, there are a couple of reasons that might be. One, it might be that you're not really living a Christian lifestyle. And if that's true, then you should seriously ask yourself why it might be that you're not living a Christian lifestyle. Are you really a Christian? But another reason could be that you're just not asking. You know, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. Are you asking him for things? Another reason is you're not requesting things that are in his will. God, give me a million dollars so I never have to work another day in my life. No, that wouldn't be good for you. And another reason why you may not be seeing answers to your prayers is because the answers aren't coming the way that you expect. They don't always come the way you expect or on your timetable. But he also says in verse 22 that we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Now, this isn't a condition to having our prayers answered. He doesn't say, if we keep his commandments. It's a description of God's children. Throughout this book, he's constantly reaffirming that God's children are the ones who do keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Answered prayer isn't a reward that you have to earn. It's based on an unconditional relationship that you have with God through his son, Jesus Christ. And this relationship is what transforms us into the kind of people whose prayers God would answer. And this is no different from a loving Heavenly Father answering the prayers of his own children within reason, you know, according to his will. So he isn't saying God will, keep, God will answer our prayers if we keep doing certain things. He says that he answers them because we're his children, which keeping his commandments and living as he pleases demonstrates. We don't keep his commandments to get things from him. We do it because we've got a new nature that's been born inside of us ever since we repented of our sins and believed the gospel. Galatians 4, 6 says, Because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his Son into your hearts, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We're able to call him Father because of the spirit of God that now dwells in the hearts of all of his children. And this harmony between our spirit and God's spirit grows over time, and our confidence in prayer grows with it. 